Hello everybody and welcome to the beginning of the end. Let me explain. Not only is today the end of our series, This or That, it's the end of the big Bible story. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say the big Bible story? The Bible is made up of a whole bunch of different stories. Stories like Daniel and the lion's den, or Jesus feeding 5,000 people. Each of those little stories is kind of like a puzzle piece. And when you fit all of those pieces together in the right order, then they give you a big picture of God's love for us. We call that picture the big Bible story. Today, we're going to play a game that will help us remember the big Bible story from beginning to end. We're calling our game this, that, or the others. It's a lot like this or that, but instead of choosing between two options, you'll choose between four options. If you choose the right one, you get a point. Keep track of your points, just like we've been doing, and see how many you get. So here's the first question. In the beginning, God created everything to be perfect. How many days did it take God to create the world and everything in it? A, five, B, six, C, seven, or D, eight? The correct answer is B, six days. Here's question number two. While in the garden, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and brought sin into the world. What did sin cause? A, death, B, disease, C, separation from God, and D, all of these things. The correct answer is D, all of these things. God had a plan to save his people from sin. He gave a man named Abraham a special family. One day that family would give birth to the Savior. What was that family called? A, the Canaanites, B, Amorites, C, Israelites, or D, Dynamite. The correct answer is C, Israelites. Many years later, the Israelites became slaves in Egypt, but God used 10 terrible plagues to make the Pharaoh let God's people go. Which of these was not one of the plagues? A, fire destroyed the houses. B, water turned to blood. C, Egypt was dark for three days. And D, frogs covered everything. The right answer is A, fire destroyed the houses. After wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, the Israelites reached the promised land. God helped the Israelites to take the land by destroying the giant walls around what city? A, Babylon, B, Jerusalem, C, Jericho, or D, New York? The correct answer is C, Jericho. Question six. Once the Israelites had moved into the promised land, they soon forgot about God. Who did God send to help turn the people back to him and to tell the people about the coming savior? A, prophets, B, priests, C, presidents, and D, pixies. The right answer is A, prophet. God's people refused to listen to the prophet. So God allowed Jerusalem to be destroyed and the Israelites were taken away as prisoners. Many years later, who did God use to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem? A, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. B, Nehemiah. C, Queen Esther. Or D, Daniel. The correct answer is D, Nehemiah. Our next question is many years after returning to the promised land, the prophecies came true and Jesus was born. Which of the following gifts did the wise men not give to Jesus? A, myrrh, B, gold, D, silver, D, frankincense. The correct answer is C, silver. When Jesus grew up, he performed many miracles. One time, Jesus said, 5,000 people using what two food? A, three tortillas and one chicken. B, eight loaves of bread and three rabbits. C, five loaves of bread and two fish. Or D, seven popsicles and two cans of Mountain Dew. The correct answer is C, five loaves of bread and two fish. Next question. Jesus taught people that he was the son of God who came to take away the sins of the world, but not everyone believed him. What group of people hated Jesus and had him arrested? A, the Hittites, B, Amorites, C, Canaanites, or D, Pharisees? The right answer is D, Pharisees. 
After Jesus was arrested, which of his disciples pretended to not know Jesus so that he wouldn't get into trouble? A. Judas B. Peter C. Paul or D. Timothy The correct answer is B. Peter Jesus was killed on a cross for our sin. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. Who did he appear to first? A. Mary and her friends B. The disciples D. Saul and D, a kid named Sammy Hinkledorf. I know you might be thinking D, but the correct answer is A. On the day of the Pentecost, God sent his Holy Spirit to guide and help the followers of Jesus. What appeared above the believer's head when the Holy Spirit arrived? A, a dove, B, a cloud, C, a flame, or D, a kid named Sammy Hinkledorf. The correct answer is C. A flame. The Holy Spirit helped Paul and his friends tell everyone about Jesus, and they started many new churches. Which of these things did not happen to Paul while he was sharing the good news? A. He was shipwrecked. B. He was pushed off a cliff. C. He was put in prison. And D. He had rocks thrown at him. The correct answer is B. Whew. What a story. How many points did you guys get? Okay, pause. Let's take a minute to think about this. What is your very favorite part of the big Bible story? What do you think it means to be a child of God? Isn't it so cool how all the stories of the Bible fit together and tell one big Bible story about God's love for us? In the beginning, God created people to be his children and to have a perfect relationship with him. But then something terrible happened. Sin separated us from God. Did God give up on us though? No way. Instead, he made a special promise to Abraham, a promise that one day a savior would be born through his family. Thousands of years later, that promise came true, and Jesus, the savior of the world, was born. When Jesus died on the cross and then rose from the dead, he defeated sin forever. And now, when we believe in Jesus and accept him as our savior, our sins are forgiven and we become children of God. In fact, that's exactly what our Bible verse for today tells us. Let's look at it together. Galatians 3, 26 says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God by believing in Christ. When we become followers of Jesus, God calls us his own children. And even though the Bible is finished being written, God's story of love isn't over. It continues in the lives of his children which is us. Here are some questions for you to think about. Question one, have you ever prayed to become a follower of Jesus? Question number two, how has God shown his love in your life? Maybe this week you could tell someone your answer to those questions. Actually, I'd love to tell you my answers to those questions. When I was in VBS, when I was six years old, I first heard the gospel about how Jesus died for me and so I could go to heaven. So I accepted Christ and immediately in that moment, I felt peace and I felt loved by God. I love hearing those stories. God is doing such incredible things in your lives, and we have a lot to celebrate. In fact, that's exactly what we should do. Let's celebrate! <laughs> Lord, we just thank you that you sent Jesus to save us. God, we we pray for all of the kids that they would just be filled by your presence and they would want to know more about you. And we pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. It's time for our blessing now. Let's hold out our hands to receive it. May God show you your part in his big story. May you never stop sharing his story with those around you. Here are today's response time prompt. Remember, you can choose whichever ones you'd like to do. It's up to you. Just remember, this is your chance to respond to our lesson and talk to God about it. Today's prayer prompt is to write a prayer, thanking God for showing his love in your life. Today's journal prompt is, if you could travel back in time and witness any story from the Bible, which story would you want to see? Why? Write about that. Today's Bible prompt is, read it for yourself, Galatians 326. Tell God how it makes you feel to be called his child. Today's art prompt is 
draw a picture of your favorite story from the Bible. While you're drawing, tell God thanks for letting you be a part of his big story of love.